Hello and welcome to the second one of these kind of videos. Um, the first one um, I posted yesterday or today, depending on when I post this. Um, and that was the 2006 chorale exam. So I've been doing past papers for chorales for my upcoming A-level music um, chorale examination. And I thought I'd share my uh, my work process, my thought process and methods and kind of little tips and tricks um, with you guys. And um, if you have any comments, any ideas, um, if you spot any mistakes or anything like that, do share it um, down in the comments below and uh, we can help each other achieve the best we can. Right, so this is a 2007 chorale exam and um, this one starts with two sharps, so that's D major or B minor. Um, but I think, again, the first chord is quite um, indicative of um, where we're going. Um, the first chord is clearly a D chord. Um, I'm going to use my fancy tool here that I realized I had yesterday. This one. Oh, look at that. Uh, <laughs> that's a D major chord. Um, that's A major, so that's um, a five chord in D, D major. Um, and... Um, as I said in the last video as well, I am working quite quickly through this because as you can see, this is a full exam paper and I don't want to make these videos longer than around one, one hour, 10 minutes, one hour, 15 minutes. That's my target. Um, so I'm trying to keep things quite um, like not, not, not going into too much detail in the explanations. But if you want me to make a video going in depth in, uh, 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 for a certain concept or um a certain part of the harmonization or um, mo modulations or anything, um, do comment down below and um, I will I will make a separate video on that. But these video videos are uh, just focusing on completing the entire chorale and looking at all the different challenges that might pop up um, whilst completing a full chorale paper, um, which is what you're going to have to do in the exam uh, anyways. So um, yes, I'm going to I'm going to be working through as quickly as possible. Um, so yes, it definitely starts off in D major. Um, with that in mind, um, let's look at the last cadence, um, of the first, actually let's, let's do this slightly differently. Let's look at all the cadences and work out where the, where, where the, um, the keys move to. So we know what we're working towards. So clearly the first one, whenever you look at this kind of pattern, you should always think two, two, one, right? Um, over here it's going that's perfectly fine if it um just be careful that you know it's not like a sharp or something that's not two two one or like a two two one will have a whole tone in between so in this case that's perfectly fine um so it is a two two one a two two one in a major which makes complete sense because we're in the key of d major a major is the dominant so that's perfectly fine i'm gonna put down a major and a perfect cadence here, right? A two two one. Um, now, because it's two two one, we can choose whether we want to do a two seven B five one cadence or a, a sus five chord five one cadence. Um, we're going to come back to that later, probably. Um, next cadence again. Look at the pattern. Same thing, but from a different note. We're going right now. We have the same two two one o over here. The the two is repeated over two bars, so it's a minimum instead of a crotchet, but essentially one and the same thing. The reason they would write it like that is because in the actual chorale, um, the lyrics over here, um, it's just one syllable extended over two, two uh, crotchet beats, whereas in the other one, um, it was probably two syllables over the two crotchet beats, which is why they've written it slightly differently, but it means the same thing. And this one, we're clearly back in our home key, D major, perfect cadence right perfect no pun intended uh, right next one next cadence we have this pattern should again ring a bell um because it's a classic three two one pattern so we're going right um in this case if you look at it uh, look look at this as three two one then we're in the key of b minor um However, you can also think of it as um, a 4-3-2 in this case. Does that work? I'm trying to think. Um, in A major. Or what if, if, if you're in D? 
indeed that doesn't work if you are in a major your dominant is e major so you could do a yeah you could do an imperfect so you could go and then an e major so you could you could do an imperfect cadence in a major at that point um but let's let's before we figure out whether to do an imperfect so uh, if I wasn't clear enough, because it goes from a C sharp to a B, I could either th think of the last two notes as a 2-1 in the key of B minor, or I could think of it as um, a 3-2 in the key of A major. So it goes 3-2 to the E major chord, which is the dominant, and 1 to the dominant is um, uh, an imperfect cadence. So you can either do an imperfect in A major at that point, um, a major is closer to the D major we ended up on there, so that's clearly going to be quite simple. Um, B minor, we're going to have to work a little harder to get to B minor, but of course it's not too far away. You can you can think of it in two different ways, actually. You can think of it as um, going um, from D major to G major, and the, because G major is the subdominant, and then from G major to its relative minor, which is B minor. Um, or other, sorry, what am I talking about? The relative minor of D major is B minor. So it's actually not that far away. So yeah, sorry, I was, I had a bit of a brain freeze moment. Um, yeah, it's quite simple. You just go relative minor. So I'm actually going to, um, yeah, I think uh, usually in the middle of the chorale, if it's a major chorale, the third phrase is, you know, right in the middle of the chorale, you might want to sh shift to a minor tonality. Um provides some contrast tonal contrast um which is quite nice oh look at that that's quite interesting what do we have there we're clearly going from a g sharp to an a so that the, the g sharp is a clear leading note into the a and that's a very clear a major at that point um i should probably write down perfect cadences um but i mean they're kind of self-explanatory i'll still write them down okay um, and then finally we go back to D major and that's a perfect cadence is the last cadence has to be so I won't bother writing down too much over there right um, now let's start actually harmonizing stuff so the first one is a is an A major um, I usually prefer doing a 2 7 B 5 1 at the very end but over here of course it's not a, a, a 2 um, 2 7 B 5 1 opportunity here it goes 1 well, one, uh, or other, you can think of it as eight, seven, eight kind of thing, so. Da, 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 da. So probably a 1C5, one at that point. A cadential 6-4 is perfect way to end. Cadential 6-4 as in you use um, second inversion chords, which are otherwise pretty much banned in Bach chorales. Um, he himself uses it sometimes, but we are not allowed to. Um, uh, yeah, but this is one of the times you can do this. It's quite characteristic characteristic because um, the 1C is quite unstable. The second inversion chords are very unstable. Hence, a very unstable 1 would resolve to the 5, which would then resolve to the 1. So it's a very nice kind of gravitational pull effect at that point. So Cadential 6-4 is perfect. Um, if you have never heard of Cadential 6-4, this chord is called the Cadential 6-4 because 6-4, if you write 1 as 6-4, then that's the figured bass notation of a second inversion chord. That's why it's called the cadential 6-4 and because it appears at a cadence. Um, but yeah, that's not something to worry about too much right now. Um, hence, I'm thinking here, because it's D major, D major is the home key, I'm going to do the 2-7-B-5-1 cadence there. And then for here, uh, the, the A major one, I might choose a 5-sus-5-1. Five five Although... I need to do I need to double check something the suspended fifth chord needs to be prepared the suspension in the fifth chord needs to be prepared are we preparing it is the question because the previous phrase has been given to us um, so let's think about it a major five chord is an E major chord if you're suspending the, this is traditionally a four three suspension that's what we're looking at right so we go four three suspension five chord and then one chord um, so 4-3 suspension, we need to be preparing that A there. Are we preparing the A anywhere? We're not. We don't have an A anywhere in the previous bar. So I think we must, we, we have to do a 2-7-B-5-1 at that point. 
Well, well, actually, we're modulating to A major anyways from D major, right? So that chord is a D major chord with without an A, actually. It's very important. So it's a D and F sharp. So um, it's a D major chord, a one chord with no fifth in it. This is, by the way, something you can do. Not too often, but a chord without the fifth is perfectly fine. Um, and usually you, you tend to double the tonic three times and then put in the third once. But, you know, he's Bach, so he can double the third if he wants to. You can too. It's not like a, a, a brutal mistake, but, um, you know, it's better to avoid doubling the third if you can. Um, so we can't do a 5 sus 5 one at that point. Can we do a 2-7-B-5-1? Because there are some passing notes, so ideally they would have to resolve. We can't just go to any note um, in the tenor and alto parts there, right? So let's think about it. Um, a 2-7-B-5-1 cadence, ideally um, the alto part would go up to um, the A. And that's perfectly fine. Now, the reason I immediately know is because of my knowledge of 27B51 cadence is the fact that I've seen them quite a few times, and hence I know how the voices progress. I know that the alto part goes 8, 7, 5. Um, so that should go like that. And that's perfectly fine, because then we can treat this, this note here, as an échappé. Right? Um, an échappé is a note that goes down or up by a step and then jumps on the, in, in, towards the opposite direction, ideally by a third, fourth, or a fifth. Um, in, this case, in this case, it's a fourth. That's perfectly fine. So that's actually quite a nice little thing. Um, the tenors would be going um, six, five, four, three. Um, the third in A major would be a C sharp. So if we think of where that would take us, that would take us all the way to an F. I don't... Mm, it's two échappés. And they're parallel as well. They're parallel thirds, so they're not like a... Brute, the, 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 they're all right, but... I'm not sure. I'm not dead sure. I'm not dead sure. By the way, the fact that we're modulating here, it should be pretty explanatory, self-explanatory. We're using the D major chord as the uh, pivot chord, which because, you know, it's a one chord and also a four chord in A major. So we're just using that to pivot. Um, but I'm just um, a tad bit concerned about how um, how I want to do the uh, this. I think an elegant solution might be to use the F there, so you treat that not as an échappé, but as a lower auxiliary, so lower, sorry, yeah, lower auxiliary note, yeah, um, a lower auxiliary is essentially like a little twiddle downwards, an upper auxiliary would be da-da-da, um, and now we have the da-da-da-da in the altos, da-da-da, yeah, we don't need to write a C sharp. It's already there in the key signature. Remember, uh, we do need to add in the G sharp on that appears um, when we're modulating to A major. Um, and now we have um, the bass line is pretty um, simple for two seven B five ones. We just go four five one or four five one. Either way, that's fine. Um, uh, going upwards is probably the better resolution. Um, so we're going to go... We know the 1 would be there. 5 would be there. And 4 would be there. Which is very nice. The bass moving in steps from the last bar. Um, but, but... Um, we are going to have to have an A there, right? And then if we keep continuing, then this is what happens in the tenor part goes below um the the bass part if you keep following the traditional 27b51 um voice parts so we have to be a little creative we have to be a little bit creative um how about we add in an accented passing note here accented passing notes are great so now we have that a there um and that's our 27b chord so 27b chord would be um, in A major 
that would be a a B minor seven, a B minor major seven, essentially. As B minor minor seven. Sorry, what am I? Yeah. Um, and then from there you go to the five chord and then down to the one chord. Um, so the B minor seven chord is just B D F sharp A, which is what we have here. We have the B. Um, F sharp. Why? Hmm. What am I doing wrong? Oh, I've been extremely stupid. This should go like that. Huh, I'm not particularly proud of that because the bass line repeats itself. The bass note is repeated from the last bar on. I'm thinking let's not do a 27B5 at all. Let's We must. We might have to change this to uh, uh, a different chord completely. We cannot do a 27B there maybe. Um, not ideal. Not ideal. We can't do a 5 sus of course. But we can do a 5 one still in A major. And then we just have to figure out what chord this is. Now I think so what if we use a what if we just do a 2b51 then what we can do is we can have this there 2b but now nah, the 2b would uh, mean the bass line is repeating itself that's what I'm not too happy about we, the 2b a two five one is interesting. Yeah, actually, I like that. I'm gonna go a B there. That can be a D. So we have the two B two chord there. Two five one. Um, the bass line has a jump of a third, but that's fine. That's not too bad. Um, this is also lower auxiliary at that at that point, by the way. So I'm just gonna write it like that. Um, you don't have to write all this stuff. I'm just trying to explain myself. So yeah, um, that's a B D F sharp B. That's a two B chord. Uh, rather, rather a two chord. Um, a five would be an E. I could put in the E here, and the A there, but I think I'm gonna. I'm gonna give the basses a easy time, not having to go down all the way down to the like the bottom of their range. Um, I think the advised range is down to an F. You can go down to the E, uh, but uh, try and stay within the F. Keep g g don't give the basses too hard of a time. Um, right. So we have that. We have the E, the G sharp, and the B. Might as well repeat the E there. Double the tonic of the chord. Um, and then A, we have the two A's, we need a C-sharp and an E. So, what I'm going to do is this. That looks very nice. We go, the tenor line goes, whilst the alto goes. That's quite nice. And then, of course, if you add in the uh, soprano part. Oh, sorry. There we go. And then if you add in the bass there, that should be... Uh, I'm not adding the bass. That's a very nice resolution. Um, and the, the, the bass line there is perfect because you're essentially going in fourths. So you're going from the fifth of E major, a B, the, do the dominant note in B major. And that's quite a powerful, um, quite a powerful bass progression to start off with. Right. That was a bit of a challenge, especially because we were moving off the, what was already given to us. Um, but now moving on, um, I think let's start with the next cadence. Um, I always like um, doing the cadences first. Um, it's quite nice if you do that, uh, do it that way, because then you know what you're working towards. Now we can be a lot quicker. It's a 27B51, um, as I've already decided. We were unable to use the 5 says 5 one but that's fine. Um, 27B51 um, in D major, that's going to be pretty simple. We have the D, we have the A there. Um, 
and then the G there, the 2 7 B chord in D major is an E minor chord with the 7th added in. But because it's in first inversion, we have the G there on the bottom. And the tenor lines, again, if you can memorize this, that's brilliant. The tenor lines goes 6, 5, 4, 3. Um, and uh, that in this case would be something like that. The sixth um, degree of the scale in D major is in fact to be. Um, that's what you get, and that's perfect. Um, and the alto usually likes going. Mm. Let's let's actually ch flip the alto on the tenor parts. Um, this is something that you might have to do quite a few times um, in 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 um, two seven B five one cadences to make sure that the parts are well spaced, because otherwise, uh, my alto part would have the D down there. Um, sorry, the D would have to be done there. And um, then you have the voices clustered towards the bottom of the of the of the frequency spectrum. So you have more um, the, the the bass tenor and alto are together and then the soprano is far off. You don't want that. You want the soprano alto and tenor to be as close as possible and the bass far off. Um, so I'm gonna go da 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 right there. Whoop. right in the proper place like that right and then here I'm gonna do the D and that that's a lot better in terms of voice writing um, and part writing and then remember in cadences the leading note going down to the fifth is completely acceptable um, because you know that you already have two tonics so the leading note doesn't necessarily have to resolve, but this is only in cadences. Though otherwise, you essentially do want the um, the leading note in this case C sharp to go up to a D, resolving to the D. But in this case, it's fine. Do not add in a passing note, however, because the leading note can only go down to the fifth, not via a sixth degree. That's very weakening. You don't want that. Right. So we have that. Uh, might as well finish the next cadence. So let's 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 first finish this phrase. Why not? Um, so we're in D major. Remember, we start off in A major. So let's start with the one chord there in A major. Um, we can immediately use that one chord as a pivot chord. We can use a 1 7 actually, because a 1 7 would be a 5 7 leading very nicely back to D major. So a 1 7 chord back down. Oh no, we can't do that because we have a B there. Sorry, I should have noticed. Um, so let's do a one chord there. And uh, let's modulate right back. We use that as the pivot chord, but then instead of going to the D major chord immediately, we use a six chord there. That's perfectly fine. Six chord, um, and then um, let's actually, yeah, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. You could think of it that way. And then we go um, five, seven, one, probably quite a nice solid move back to. The D major, the seventh chord always just pushes you towards a new tonality a lot more um, because you're adding in that new note that changes in the key signature, right? The G natural would exist in the A7 chord. So that's perfect. 5-7 going on to the 1. Um, going all the way up to an F, um, F sharp. What chord? Usually um, F sharp, you would like a D chord there as well. So let's do this. Let's do a 1B here. And then a 1 here. The reason I'm not doing 1 and 1B is because the, the soprano line goes. And if the bass line went 1 and 1B, you'd get parallel octaves. But now, if I do 1B1, then I get. You get the contrary motion in the soprano and bass, which is brilliant. Um, and then if you end on a 1 on a D there, it's perfectly fine to jump down a 5th to the 4th degree of the scale. So that's perfectly fine. We can add in our little counterpointy bass line there, working against the soprano, so that's brilliant. And then the 5 chord would have an A, so we can have a really nice walking bass line there. Always very nice to have a walking bass line moving in one direction. Um, uh, actually, we can even extend that further because the sixth chord would have the B there. So that's very nice. Very nice indeed. Repeat that chord. Um, 
usually hmm usually it's quite nice to have the bass jump down if you're repeating the same chord um is there but if i jump down here then you're jumping again by a ninth and that's not that's not nice um you don't want to jump by some odd interval like a ninth um so i'm gonna just trying to think what else i can do um i could have the quite uh, uh, like i could instead have the bass line go down to the e there and the a there whoops sorry that's not an a that's a c my brain switched back to treble clef for a moment. Um, we could do that. But I'm not a big fan. <laughs> yeah, again, I don't I, I don't like using that low E there. So I'm gonna I'm gonna actually Wait, what am I doing? We're in A major, right? So A major that should be a E. This is completely wrong. Oh no, it's a two five one. No, that was it was right. What am I doing? Yeah. It was right. So just the five is there. Uh, for a moment I thought I was doing two seven B five one. But we didn't change our minds. Um We could also jump down over there, but I don't really want to. Um Is there anything else I can do? I could I don't want to go down to this D there. So transpose it, 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 it down an octave, that would be terrible. That low D is pretty hard for basses to get to, so... Hmm. I think I have to be content with repeating the chord. It's fine repeating a chord at the end of a phrase. Um, that's not too bad. Um, I'm still trying to think of a better, better option. Um, so over here you have the B then the 5, 7, and then the 1B. So the A has to be here if we were to follow that chord progression. Um, what we could do, you know what? Let's add, add in a little little octave jump there. This is very nice for basses. You can do this. Um, you can do a little octave jump that's very characteristic and then put the A down there. And I think that's a far more elegant solution. You're adding in very nice kind of jumpy bass lines, octave jumps in the bass are fantastic. They always work very well. Um, so we have the A, C, E, A, and now you are, even though you're repeating the chord, the bass line has changed notes, which is, which is very nice. Um, right, and then let's finish that off. So we have the 27B there. I, again, as I said, I like working backwards. So um, the one chord there would be a, D, F sharp, A chord. So we have the D, we have the F sharp, um, might as well have the A there, and a D there. That works very nicely. The parts are moving on very nicely, stepwise movement. Um, just check for parallels, but there aren't any. Um, beautiful, beautiful, works perfectly. Um, one B chord, we have the F sharp, we have the D. We can actually just keep the other notes staying exactly where they are, and that's brilliant. Um, the five seven chord we have the A we have the we have the C sharp we might as well put in an E here, and the A can stay exactly where it was. That is very nice indeed. Um, there are no opportunities of suspensions here, um, but if there are, then do put them in. Of course, here we have a moving bass line, so I wouldn't suggest putting in a suspension when the bass line or the uh, soprano line is already moving. Um, and here, of course, we don't, although the bass line and the soprano line are not moving, the chord doesn't change, so we can't really suspend. Um, we could, I guess, suspend by, like, adding in a passing note here as as a, as a E there and then, you know, suspending that. Uh, but I'm not a big fan of that because there are already two passing notes. There's going to be too much dissonance. Um, and that would also create parallels with the soprano line. So there you go. <laughs> My instincts did serve me well there. Um, right. So um, as I mentioned before, this is quite an ideal voicing. Um, this this bit here. Sorry, that was terrible penmanship. Um, yeah, this is quite nice voicing when you have the fifth in the bottom and the third on the top stave like that. Um, very, very ideal voicing. Um, 
Oh, or do we have parallel fifths? No, we don't have parallel fifths. We would have if the baseline moved to a G there, but it doesn't. So, yeah, no parallel fifths. Um, beautiful. So, oh, don't do that. Don't do that. Do not do that. I just move stuff around. That's not good. Oh, and it stopped working. Okay, now it's going to start working again. Yeah. This happened a couple of times the last time I made such a video as well. If you haven't checked out the last video, by the way, do do go and give that a give that a look as well. Um, it will just you know give you um, more scenarios to look out for and more tips and tricks. Um, right. So, a B minor chord. We have the B, the two Bs there. Um, we need a D natural and an F sharp. So that's perfect. Right there. Now, do I want to add in a passing note? I probably do. Although the bass does jump. I'm um, actually I don't because the bass jumps by an octave and I want that to shine through. So I want to leave the other notes where they are and the alto jumping by a third is perfectly fine. That is a very much that is very much an artistic choice and um you know, um you can probably put in a passing note and they'll still be fine, but I just personally prefer uh, letting the basses have their little moment there. Um, so that's that phrase done. That was pretty quick, wasn't it? Um, keep moving. Um, we have a 3 two, one there. So I think because we already have a 1C5-1, we were thinking of doing a 1C5-1 at the end, weren't we? Um, let us let us do a 1B5-1 here because it goes... Um, because it goes... Uh, or other here, right? Um, you can do a one one B five one. So a one B five one would be, um, what would that be? It would be, or other for over here. That would be the bass line. So, um, I'm quite I quite like that bass line there. Um, I'm gonna do a one B five one. That's another. So whenever you have a three two one pattern, you can either do one C five one, one B five one, or a one five one. Um, usually one B and one C are better because that slight weakness in the first tonic chord uh, prepares the dominant a little better. But one five one is fine as well. Um, I'm gonna do a one B five one. So we're gonna start at the D, move up in steps to the five, and then go up to the B there. Again, going up is better than going down on the final resolution of a perfect cadence. B, D, F sharp. Um, you could do a Tears de Picardy here, trying to use that um, B major chord to modulate back to an E major, to an A major, to a D major. That'd be interesting, but I don't want to do that because the rest of the chorale is in major. So I kind of want a minor cadence at that point. Although, you know, you can be creative and... The, in fact, the B major there would move right back onto an E major there, and then you can use that immediately to move back to the A major, which we end up on the next phrase. So that would be perfect as well. Um, however, I personally like the minor minor cadence in the middle of a chorale, creating them some, some tonal contrast. Um, and the, again, these are personal choices, and both are equally fine and imaginative, so you're going to get the marks for either of them. Right. Um we have the F sharp, we have the C sharp there. So the five chord in B major, uh, B minor or B major is uh, an F sharp major chord. So we have the F sharp, C sharp. We probably should put in another F sharp there. I don't need the sharp sign there, do I? I do need an A sharp. But then I don't like that jump, so... Hmm. Hmm. How to do this? So usually a two B five one likes to go. Um. The the uh, alto part moves in thirds, and before the leading note goes down to the fifth, as we've seen many a times before, um, and the. tenor part likes to do this again that passing seventh as we see quite a common idea like we had in the two seven b5 one as well 
right there, the passing seventh note. Um, that passing note is not just any passing note, it's the seventh degree in that uh, five in the dominant chord. So creating a five seven sound on that second quaver beat leading on to the one quite well. Um, I should probably write down I'm doing a one B five one here. Uh, it's a minor key, so I'm gonna use small letters. Right, and then you have the F there. Whip, get the line in the right place. That's neat. Um, right, yeah, so we have the B, D, F sharp um, right there. Um, in this case, we are doubling the third, but that's perfectly fine. This is a very, very standard uh, progression, and we do see the third being doubled here. Kind of creates that weakness again that wants to resolve to the five. Um, finishing off that phrase then, um, we're moving to the B minor from a D major, which is just the six. So um, it should be quite easy to modulate. So I think, of course, we're still in D major here. That looks like a five chord, easily mo uh, easily harmonized by a five chord, the C sharp there. Going to a one chord, some form of inversion, but we'll figure out the inversions as we go along. Um, the E could be another five chord, but let's start thinking how we are gonna go to that B minor chord. Now, of course, we need an F, uh, we don't need the F major, we already have that in the cadence somewhere. Uh, we do need, um, so we can, we can just use the D major chord to modulate to um, the uh, the B, B minor chord, cause you know, it's just one six. Um, I think I might wanna do a two, one, six at that point. Or, or, we haven't used a four chord yet. Well, might as well use a four chord. Um, we can use a four chord here, like that. So we have a five chord. Uh, a five chord and then a four chord. And then the E could be a two chord. Yeah, and then we could do the... Yeah, I quite like that. Let's not repeat the tonic chord too many times. I'm going to use a four chord there, right? And then a two chord there. Again, some form of inversion, probably a 2B. And then we go to the tonic and then use that to pivot to the six, which then... Or rather, we just use the six as the pivot, which then becomes the new tonic. So you could write it either way. You could make this the tonic. Uh, you could call... Uh, you could call this the major third of the chord as well, but you know, technically the third degree of a minor scale is diminished in the harmonic minor scale. So this is probably slightly better, but it doesn't really matter. It will give you the same chord progression anyways. It's just the way you think of the music theory underneath. Um, so that's fine. Right, so the sixth chord is a B minor. Um, of course, we can just have a B there, although, if we do have, if we have a B there, that makes life a little hard, doesn't it? Because we now have parallels with 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 the soprano. We can have an échappé at that point, like that. But that's not very nice, because then we have the leading note, so we would go, and that wants to resolve back to the one. So. It's probably better to just do a 1B, but then we're repeating the 1B chord too many times and I'm not a big fan of that. Mm. What if we, what if we, what if we went directly to the B minor chord here, made that the one, yeah, pivoting there now, pivoting there. And now we can use the B, so we have the B minor there and then you can, harmonize that B chord there with a G major chord which is a 6 chord in B major in B minor sorry um, and then I think now because we already have a G there I'm gonna just use a tonic chord here which is probably better yeah I quite like that I quite I quite quite like that quite like that um, or maybe no, because that's stay, stay to a four. Because I just realized that makes the bass line more contrapuntal with the soprano. 
Um, right, let's figure out the baseline then. Um, so we have a G there, um, a G to a D is a very nice jump for the basses and the devil avoids any of that parallel business with the soprano. That's very nice. Um, the sixth chord there, we can have a little bit of that. That is in parallel with the sopranos, but that those are parallel thirds. The B and the D are parallel thirds. I'm going to still put in a little star mark to make sure I remember to take ultra care over there to make sure I don't get any parallel fifths or octaves in the parts in between, so the tenor and alto parts, because it's very easy to get them when the bass line and the soprano line are moving in parallel. But, um, you know, sometimes the bass line and the um, soprano line moving in parallel thirds is quite nice. Um, right, so now the two chord is an E minor chord. We might want a G there um, as a 2B chord. Da da dee da da. That's a very nice kind of bass line movement. So just a 2B chord there. Um, the four chord is a G major chord. So, ah, what if we do this? Another little octave jump in the bass. Very nice. Instead of repeating the same note, you do a little octave jump. Um, and then of course we have a five chord there, which can very well have the A right there. The A jumping down to the, well, the A doesn't, it, it moves down by a step to the G. So that's very nice. Again, in counterpoint with the soprano moving in opposite directions, that's brilliant. Um, and yes, I quite like that bass line. Let's now fill up the other parts. So we have a G major chord there. We have the G, we have the B. Um, we need a D. Might put the D there. So again, parallel thirds between soprano and tenor isn't too bad. Just need to be careful the other parts. Um, the bass line is jumping, so that's brilliant. Um, we have a parallel sixth actually between the tenor and the soprano, right? we have that right between the soprano and tenor but that's not too bad um the alto so we have the g the b and the d now we just need another g there now i wouldn't put in another passing note there oh i'm, I'm debating whether i put the passing note it's actually this is fine this is actually quite an important trick to remember if you want parallel thirds and sixths um, between soprano alto and tenor parts then doing it in this kind of second inversion form um, just removing the bass line is that's essentially a second inversion chord right and then you have that is perfectly fine because then you have parallel six on the outside and parallel thirds on the inside so yes, I'm actually going to be quite happy to put that in a little parallel movement upwards and then um, the following the contrapuntal movement and then, you know, resolving to the tonic, the contra lines. Um, right, I quite like that. So I'm going to I'm gonna keep it at that. Um, making sure that there are no A sharps anywhere after we've pivoted. There is one. Do I want to put an A sharp in there though? Because then... I start getting augmented intervals. So in that case, I want a G sharp as well. But the G sharp doesn't exist in the G major chord. Ooh. So maybe actually I don't want that passing note there. I can leave it at the G. The jump of a third in the alto is perfectly fine. We just avoid all that, all that weird and then doing that would give you a diminished chord and uh, we avoid all of that. Perfect. Um, now, yeah, we have a six chord there, um, six slash one, so B minor chord. Um, we have the B, we have the D, have the F sharp there, nice little stepwise movement in the altos in the opposite direction to the bass and the soprano, so I'm very happy to see that. Um, the soprano and the bass, did I say soprano and alto? Mm. Um, so we have the F sharp there we have the B, we have the D, we have the F sharp and I'm very happy to see the fact that the tenor moves in the opposite direction as well if you double the B that's perfect so now we can remove that star sign because now we know there are no parallel issues um, um, and yes, so we have man managed to make the bass line and the soprano work parallelly together quite well at that point um, 
how are we doing for time? We have around 45 minutes in. Um, we have finished almost half of it. Um, the last couple of phrases should be quite quick. Um, let's let's put our thrust engines on, finish this as quickly as possible. Um, so a 2B chord, E, G, B, we already have the G, we have the E, we need the B, and voila, the B is repeated in the tenor part. Perfect. Um, now we have all the notes of the chord, we probably want to repeat the E, and voila, we get the E right there in the alto part. There is um, an octave gap between the soprano and alto parts. You want to make sure that that's the max you use. You can't go higher than um, higher than an octave um, in between the tenor, alto, and soprano parts. Between the bass and tenor, again, fine. But the rest of it, you want to stay within an octave. An octave is fine, but that's a limit. Right. So a four chord, that's a GBD chord. So I don't want to put another D there. That would create parallels with the with the soprano. So what I want there is ideally a G. That goes in closer than the octave, so that's very nice as well. We go down like that. So we already have two Gs, a D, we need a B, and voila, the B is repeated in the tenors again. Um, I'm just going to look once real quick for suspension opportunities. I think, can I suspend a little... That is not really a 4-3 suspension from the C-sharp because we have the A major chord before. So that would be a 4-3, but that could work as well. I'm going to leave it at the... Uh, I'm, I don't really like that. That kind of C-sharp to B suspension there, so I'm, I'm, I'm not going to add in any. But you could, I guess, if you wanted to. Um... We are doubling the third here, so do I really want that? Probably not. So I'm going to jump up to the fifth uh, there in the tenor part. That's perfectly fine going from the A to the E, especially even uh, because it's after a pause. Of course, remember, you're not adding in any passing notes there because it's the end of a phrase. Um, and <clears throat> that's basically that phrase. Nice and done. Um, moving on to the next phrase, which is the second last phrase, as I'm very happy to see. We have the A major. We are essentially doing a 1-5-1 one, one again, some form of that. Because we have... Right, and the, that B is an échappé, right? This is just an échappé. Um, so, we can essentially treat that as a... Um, do a 1B51 again, probably, reserving that beautiful 1C51 for the end. Um, the <clears throat> 1B51 here would be in an A major key. So, just like that, probably. Although I have to be careful, there might be some parallel issues, although there isn't any, because these are parallel sixths. So I'm happy to see that. So because of the extra pair, you could have some parallel issues, but there isn't any. any. Sorry, excuse me. Right. Um, <clears throat> we have the E there. Um, let's, let's first write down the last chord. As we know, this is the ideal voicing for the end of the uh, phrase chord, like that. The third on the bottom, the fourth on the top, creating a very nice chord, closed chord there. Um, e, G sharp, we need a B somewhere. Um, what are, the classic T7, B5, 1 um, goes... Uh, actually... Yeah, so this one is not 3, 2, 1 in the bass line, it's... Um, it's 878. So we won't do that little jump from the um, the leading note down to the fifth like we did here or here or here. Um, we won't need to because the leading note already resolves to the tonic and we already have the G sharp in there. We don't need to double the G sharp. Um, so might as well have a B here and repeat the E. Oftentimes when you don't have to use the 
G sharp or, or like the leading note in the chord before, in the five chord before the thing, because it already exists in the soprano part, you repeat the f- fifth degree of the scale in either the tenor or alto part. So in this case, we see that works perfectly. Um, we have the A, E, and C sharp. You might want an A there. So that's that, that's perfect. Ah, but it is, is it? Yes, it is. <laughs> Very close. The the A and the B there would have created parallels with that, but it doesn't because that's within the quaver beat and then it resolves down. So, yes, just just being ultra careful that we don't um, we don't create any parallels. The alto part has no issues because it's repeating a note, so that's perfect. Finishing off that phrase real quick. We're on fifty minutes. Um, I'll try and finish this off within as close to as a, an hour. Um, that would be very nice. Um, and yes, if you can do chorales within an hour, that's brilliant because I think you're given around four to six hours to complete two chorales, so you get tons of time to check through, um, play through the chorales, play through. Um, I mean, biggest advice I can give you: play through the chorales. Um, as you saw, my, if you've seen my last, my last video, wh- when I played through it, I figured out that there were a couple mistakes um, or a couple things that didn't sound as nice, um, could have been done better. I'm going to do that again. I'm going to play through after I finish. And if I find any mistakes, I'll let you know. And if you find any mistakes again, by the way, do let me down, uh, did, let me know down in the comments below. Don't let me down. Yeah, just let me know down in the comments below. Don't let me down. Do me proud. Um, sorry, I sound like a dad. Um Right, so we have the A major there. Let's figure out the other chords. So we ended on a B minor. To go from the B minor to an A major, I think it's quite easy to it, it would be quite easy to do that because the B minor, the minor four chord would be an E. We could use a major fourth to go to the A major. That might be interesting. Alternatively, we could just go back to the D and then down to, you know, go to the fifth, the dominant of the D major. I feel like doing the major fourth chord within the minor scale is quite interesting. It's it's quite a nice coloristic addition. So it ends on a B, B minor chord. Um, and then what if I just use that E? Uh, or maybe not. Yeah, I probably can't do that. So <laughs> I'm just going to use that as a six there. So pivoting right back onto D major, towards D major, yeah. And uh, that E, that can be, that is going to be a five chord. So that's just going to be an A chord in in um, in D major. Um, then we have a D. Um... I'm just trying to think if I can do a contrapuntal bass line there. <laughs> um, maybe down to a G there. Or I can't do that. Um, the, a G, the G there. The A there. So another five chord. That doesn't look really like an A. A. Then we have the B there. We have another B here. Probably a... Uh, uh, a B minor chord at that point. Um, and then finally, an A major chord that would then... Yeah, what if we do that? Yeah, I quite... Look at that bass line. Ooh, look at that bass line then jumping down by an octave. And that's brilliant. Uh, wrong, wrong handle though. Um, but... That does ah, I can't do that because the tenor part then goes below below the below the bass line. So I can't quite do that. Very sad indeed. Very, very sad. Um if I could do it down here, that would be fantastic, wouldn't it? But I can't because um I'm on the A over there. I'm just thinking of other stuff I could do. I don't want to use an E major chord at that point because it goes down to D over here. So that would be a D major chord. Uh, I just want to stay within the realms of D major. Um, so I'm probably just going to go 5, 1 here. Not try and be too fancy. Um, 5, 1. 
then another five probably um we have a C sharp so maybe we could use a we could use a little diminished chord that leads on to the six so seven B with that C sharp being doubled um or rather no yes C sharp being doubled right now E needs to be doubled, right? Yeah, the second, uh, the third in the diminished chord needs to be doubled. So, um, or I mean, it doesn't need to be, but it's ideal if you do it. So, we need to double the E somewhere. I might put that in there, just to remind me that I need to double that um, to a six chord there. Um, so probably down to a six B. Again, uh, be wary of the parallels. In this case, that's fine. Parallel sixth are not that bit of, big, big of an issue. Um, but just be mindful in the other parts. Um, and then finally, over there, we go to an A major chord. Probably right there with the C sharp. No. Go down to the A there. Little passing note. That's fantastic. I like that. I like that bass line. Yeah, that works very well. Um, yeah, so let's start filling that up. Um, I'm going to look at suspension opportunities in this phrase because there are quite a few ones where the soprano and the bass line, uh, like those three, the soprano and the bass line don't have any quaver beats, so that's ideal for suspensions. Mm, we have the two A's there. We need a C sharp and the E, and that would, by the way, be our pivot chord, or rather five slash one. So the dominant of D major becomes the tonic, and then we have a one B five one. Right. How are we doing for time? Fifty six minutes. Yeah, we can do this. We have one phrase left. We'll do this real quick. Um. Right. So A major. We have the A. Put in the C sharp there. In a nice in the tenor. Um the E there. Doubling the tonic. Beautiful. No parallel issues, just double checking. No, that's fine. Um, nice bit of counterpoint between bass and tenor. Um we have the B, we have the D, we have the F sharp here. Um a little parallel forts between uh um, soprano and alto is perfectly fine again and we have the B there no parallel issues um, because soprano and alto are in counterpoint to the tenor which is which I'm very happy to see in the 7B um, of course we'll have an E doubled as I said so we will have that E being doubled there um, we need a G might as well put the G there um, and then, of course, remember, diminished chords are, can be a great way to modulate um, between um, keys. So, if I were to do a diminished seven, that would be a great way to that would be a great way to go to the B minor chord there. But in this case, I'm just using that to go to that B minor chord. A very nice kind of movement downwards there, um, um, and the diminished chord can resolve to the D or the B minor. And remember. This diminished chord, the diminished seventh chord, is even better if you want to modulate to the B minor um, tonality. In this case, we just, that's like a little um, coloristic chord there. We're not modulating to B minor, so that's 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 perfect. Right, then we have a D major chord there. We have the D, F sharp, and the A probably right there. All right, quite happy with that. Finally, here we have the A, we have the E. Might, might, might put the C sharp there. Might put another A there. That doesn't look too bad. Of course, the C going down to the A, we might put a passing note there. And the um, F sharp, we might put a passing note there. C to A. Yeah, those are fine. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's perfect. Right, a little passing notes there. Um, now I'm going to quickly look for suspension opportunities if there are any. Of course, we can't suspend anything in the 7B chord, but I want to suspend something right here. And I probably can. That is a fantastic suspension opportunity. Especially because we have the G right there. We suspend like that. And then we resolve to the F sharp. So I'm going to write in a little 4-3 suspension there. Right? That's a 4-3 because in... A very nice 4-3 suspension. Any other suspension opportunities? I don't see any. But if you can find some, put them in. Let me know if you find some again. Um, more suspension opportunities, the you know, better marks you get. So we're around the one hour mark. Um, I'm going to try and do the last one real quick. Um, it's more of the same thing. So 1C51, um, that's going to be the D. Um, and the 5, I'm going to do this. So there are two possible bass lines you can do for a 1C51. You can do a... Or you can do a... Right? Um, usually the... Is better when you... Um, cannot do the jump because you know because of range issues like if we were in 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 I don't, I don't know like c major then oh no c major would be fine if we were like in um let's say a major yeah then the d jump would be from there to there and that d is quite low alternatively you could do a d there to a d a d there but then that d would be too high so in that case, you should resort to the other possible bass line that you have. Um, but in this case, this octave jump again, beautiful for the basses. They love octave, ju octave jumps. And um, of course, we know what the top line looks like. The tenor part goes ta 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 ta. Just like that. And the. Um, uh, the alto line likes to go. I'm just thinking if I want to switch them. Or I actually do want to switch them around again because I want the cluster of notes to be in the upper three parts, right? So I'm going to do. In the alto. Five, five, four, three. In the alto. And the basses do the. Eight seven five. Right, that's a very nice finish. Um, like that a lot. Um, and then of course, moving back, we are modulating from A major, but we can immediately use that as a five chord to modulate right back to D major, right there. Okay, so we add in the little D major there. And then keep if we keep going, we have three repeated Ds. And when you repeat the tonic, what you can do is probably that. Or so kind of with it being uh, staying within that one, four, six, because those are the three chords that have the tonic in them. Um. I'm just thinking what order I want to do them in. Yeah. I probably want to do uh, some form of one, four, six, five, one. The right. So we have the one there. Um, let's let's actually work backwards again. Thinking of the bass line, so we have the D here. Let's do a proper one. So the bass line would go. That's a very nice finish. Of course, an octave lower, but, you know, I'm having a bit of trouble reaching down to the lower octave with the mic in front of me. I kind of quite have to stretch. 
Um, yeah, and then the five, of course, I might want to do a five B there to make sure that the base moves in a bit of step stepwise movement there. Also, opposite directions to sopranos. That's brilliant. Um, um, a six chord might do one there. So parallel thirds between bass and um, soprano. Just be very careful there. Parallel thirds between bass and soprano. Um, four chord. So, whoop. That's probably not very nice. Looks like a little frog with two eyes. Um, that is a very nice bass line. Moving stepwise upwards before resolving. Uh, very nice. Right. So we have the D there. Might as well put in another D. I think I'm going to do this. I'm going to put in a D here and an F sharp here. You might go, where is the A? We don't need the A because we have doubled the tonic three times. We have put in one third. So it's a no five chord. It's just the tonic and the third. You can't have the tonic and the fifth. That's that's going to cause open fifths and... Eh. Um, Bach doesn't like open fifths. Um, they create too much of an ambiguous chord. Um, you don't know whether it's major, minor. So yes, you want the third. Ideally, you want the tonic double three times and the third. But as you saw, as Bach himself does, you can probably double the third um, twice, like in that chord, and get away with it. But let's 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 not get too creative there. Um, five B, of course. We have the C sharp. We have the E. We need two A's. So I'm probably going to put in one A there and one A here. You could jump up to the D or you might want to give the tenors a little bit of a little jolty moment because it's towards the end. Um, use this very sparingly, but you can do this. I'm going to see if this works. If it doesn't, I'm going to remove it. I'm going to let you know But I'm playing through the things. Um, but you, you, this can be quite a nice addition sometimes, giving the tenors a little bouncy moment, time to flourish, um, a little semi-quaver movement. You can do this. Um, and um, then you have the B minor chord there. So the B, we have the D. Um, we need another B there. Very nice stepwise movement in the tenors there. Um, opposite to the soprano and bass. That's very important. I'm just double checking. We don't have any parallels anywhere. Always, always good to do that. Um, yeah, that's fine. Um, and then the sopranos, uh, the altos, sorry, would have a B sharp, uh, a, B, a B sharp, F sharp. Um, and then we have the full chord. Of course, very probably very, quite helpful to add in the passing note. So, uh, altos have quite a nice moment there, and then right. So that's quite a nice moment for the altos. We have a four chord there, so G B D. Um, we have the G, we have the D. Voila, B gets repeated in the tenors. Very nice, and the G comes quite naturally over there. Just checking we don't have any parallels and we're good to go. Final chord is that one chord there. So we have the D. Um, we have two Ds. So we need an F sharp and we need an A. Might as well put the F sharp there which, leads, which would lead nicely onto the G. And then A here which would not lead nicely onto the B down there. And that is it. We finished the chorale in an hour and nine, ten minutes around. Um, and that's fantastic. That's fantastic. We're doing, we're doing very well for time. Hope you enjoyed. Um, hope you learned something. Again, please feel free to comment down below and share it with friends whom you, who you think might benefit from, um, from looking at some uh, random dude doing chorales um, like a nerd. But, you know, uh, chorales are nice. Chorales are nice. Um, yes, I'm going to do a little recording of this now. I might come up with some mistakes. I'll let you guys know if I do. Probably as little future me interjections within the video, within the edit. And I'm going to play it out on a piano or, uh, or an organ. 
Um, I did an organ last time because I think the organ sounds quite nice. It, it gives you a nice idea of how the voice flows on. Um, and um, yes, uh, have a good day. See you in the next video. And all the best for your chorale practice. Bye-bye.